as we partake the Holy Communion today, I want to read Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 and 19, 20, pause to read verses 23, verse 23. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18. The Bible says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and the earth. Verses 20. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Let me explain there and say that Abraham is just from fighting the enemies and he has overcome and as on his way back, the Bible says he is met by this man called Melchizedek. Melchizedek, Mel is, uh, of course, is a king. Kizedek means peace. So he's a king of peace. Praise God. But also we are told that he was a king of Salem. Salem is the house of God, the praise of God, the habitation of God in Jerusalem. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now, he came, this man, and look at what he's carrying, the bread and the wine. That's a communion table. That this man, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, came carrying and gave them to Abraham. He gave him a communion, Eucharistic, these are Eucharistic items, Eucharistic elements, bread and wine. He gave bread and wine to Abraham, Amen. and the Bible says Abraham, and he also blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham, the Bible says, don't be confused about this, the lesser is blessed by the greater. That's what the Bible says. So this Melchizedek, the king of Sarim, said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and earth. So the king of Sarim is the Christophany, or he is a pre-incarnate Christ. He is a picture of Christ who is the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords. And when he came on this world, he gave us bread and wine. Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Wow. As the Eucharistic elements. Amen. He gave us bread, his body. He said, you can eat my body and you can drink my cup. He was not asking us to be cannibals. No. He was telling us, literally, take my body and become like me so that you may overcome the way I overcame. Drink my blood so that you may be like me, so that I may remove the DNA that you have of curses and poverty and lack. Take my blood and let you drink it. And when you drink it, you shall be a different man. He was not asking us to eat men and to eat fresh and to drink fresh or no. He was not asking us to be fresh eaters, to be human, human eaters. He was asking us to take his blood so that we can become like him. It is fresh so that if our flesh can never be sick like his flesh was never sick. Wow. The Bible says, and he blessed him. This is God blessing us. Amen. The lesser is blessed by the greater. Amen. So it is Jesus Christ, the Christophany, the pre-incarnate Christ, blessing Abraham. He blessed him and said unto him, Blessed be Abraham. That time he was not yet Abraham, he was Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and the earth. And he gave him the tithes of all. Now Abraham gave him tithes to Melchizedek. The king of Salem. Something happened. That is very important for me to read. Verses 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Take everything I have, but give me the persons. Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord. 
the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from thee a thread, even a shoe ratchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, rest thou should they say, I have made Abraham rich. This is a very powerful point. King of Sodom came and gave Abraham, yes. wanted to give Abraham many things in exchange of his men who had fought, yeah. who had fought for Abraham. But Abraham said, I cannot take anything from you. The rest you say you made Abraham rich. What is happening? This is exactly what happens at the communion table. When we take the communion table, when we take the element from Melchizedek, when we take the wine and the bread from Melchizedek, our King of Salem, Jesus Christ, Anything else becomes irrelevant. Wow. Anything else to us becomes irrelevant. Wow. If this king of Sodom would have come before he took the bread and the wine from Melchizedek, possibly, possibly, maybe he would have taken everything from King of Sodom. But now that he has taken the holy communion from Melchizedek. Now that he has communion <laughs> with the Lamb of God, everything else becomes irrelevant. Amen. This is the power of the Holy Communion. Now, I am reminded something else. Remember that first banquet of Esther. When they went and asked the king to come in the book of Esther, the Bible says the king stretched forth his scepter and Esther touched the scepter and the king said do you want anything to do for you even if it means half of my kingdom and at that time Esther said please come for the banquet I'll tell you there what is my request they came in the banquet which is the communion table Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And as he came to the communion table, Esther did not rush to speak about Haman to the king. At the communion table, when you have a fellowship with God and communion with him, everything else becomes irrelevant. Ah. Everything else becomes irrelevant. Amen. My God, I wish you would get the points I'm saying. Everything is irrelevant. It is after the mighty, mighty banquet that the king asked, now that I am very happy, Esther, what do you want me to do for you again? Esther said, I am so happy of the banquet. The communion with the king is everything to me. Please, can I throw another banquet tomorrow? She is not in a hurry to say her problems. At the, at the banquet, at the communion table, we are not in a hurry to say our problems. We are in a hurry to worship. We are in a hurry to give the fellowship and intimacy to the King of Kings. Amen. Even after the first banquet, Esther did not mention. Even after the second banquet, Esther did not mention until the king asked. This is now the second banquet. What do you want me to do. And Esther said, anyhow, I am enjoying the banquet. I am enjoying the communion with you, King of Kings. The picture of how we need to be in communion with the King of Kings. I'm in communion with you. I actually don't remember my progress. But anyway, it is, I, I was throwing this banquet because of Haman who wants to kill us. There is somebody who wants to kill all of us. And the king stood in reach to ask specifically, Who is that and where is he? Ah, your requests are granted at the communion table. Jesus. Make sure you worship God first before you request. Let your petitions come last. Amen. Your petitions will come last. <laughs> at the communion table, we are not in a hurry to tell the Lord, I want a car. I want a wife. I want a house. No, at the communion table, it is just worship and 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 more worship. 
and that's another king at his own expense. He may want to ask us, now that I am very happy, what can I do for you? That's when you mention in passing. It is not a major issue. It is irrelevant. When I have the king here, Haman is nothing. If I have the king with me here, then Haman is nothing. That is the essence of a communion table. That is the essence of a communion table. I am saying that is the essence of a communion table. Everything else becomes irrelevant. As we partake the Holy Communion today, we do not want to ask God what to do for us. We want God to ask us what we need Him to do for us. Amen. It is different. When you ask, it is hard. When He asks, it is easy. It is easy. Hallelujah! For more information about Powerhouse Impact Church and Apostle Frank M., please contact 0741160754. 